And they were invading the protection that was given to these people. So they would not <laughs> they make this sin, even in their religion inside Al-Haram, inside Mecca. So they took them out to at tanin And then they, they tied them up. And they said, and Abu Sufyan came to witness this killing, this crime. And then he started talking to Zayd. And he said, Unshibuka Allah ya Zayd. I, I swear, I make, a, I make a vow to you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Want to tell me the truth. أَتُحِبُّ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا عِنْدَنَا الْآنَ فِي مَكَانِكَ تُضْرَبُ عُنُقَهُ وَأَنَّكَ فِي أَهْلِكَ Wouldn't you like that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would be here instead of you being killed and you would be safe in your own house? Wouldn't that be a better position for you? And then Zayd looked at him very confidently and he said, والله ما أحب أن محمدًا الآن في مكانه الذي هو فيه تصيبه شوكة تؤذي وإني جالس في أهلي. Not only I wouldn't like Muhammad to be here صلى الله عليه وسلم being killed, I don't like for رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم where he is now in his safety among his companion to be stuck with with a splinter in his finger that he would hurt from. And I would be safe in my own house. I would rather to be killed than to hear about Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam being hurt in, in, in a very small thing, like a thorn uh, stick. And then Abu Sufyan looked at him and he knew his, that he is really, truly telling the truth. And he said, مَا رَأَيْتُ أَحَدًا مِنَ النَّاسِ يُحِبُّ أَحَدًا كَحُبِّ أَصْحَابِ مُحَمَّدٍ مُحَمَّدًا I have not seen anybody that love the, somebody as much as the companion of Muhammad loved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and then they ordered the uh, slave to Safwan to come and kill him and he uh, killed uh, Zayd may Allah have uh, the, the blessing mercy and be pleased with him The, the two tribes invited uh, these people to go out with them and become teachers to teach the Islam while they were preparing a trap for them. They were preparing a place for them to be killed on the way there. They, they knew all along that that's what they are doing. So uh, that was the plot. Now the, the uh, dispute there whether Quraysh was involved in that or not, but some, some people say Quraysh itself was involved in this. So that was the, the catastrophe of al rajiya of Bir al rajiya And uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was very hurt for the, the extent of their, his companions being killed in such a way, in such, not only inhumane way, in such a, a treason, a tre treachery way. They were not killed on a battlefield. They were out to teach Quran. They were out to teach deen. And they were trapped and they were killed and they were sold as slaves, been crucified and killed in Mecca. Another thing was what is also known in the seerah as Ma'satu Bi'ri Ma'una, which literally translates into the catastrophe of the well of Ma'una. And it happened in the same month in Safar of the fourth year of Hijrah. At the same month that the catastrophe of Bi'r al-Raji happened with, subhanAllah. And what happened is a person name was Amir ibn Malik. And Amir ibn Malik came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to send companions with him to Najd. And he asked for many of them because he not only wanted people to come to his tribe, he said, let's spread the religion in Najd. And Najd, for those of you who are not very familiar with the geography of Saudi Arabia, is the place where Riyadh is, the capital, and then the area of Al-Qasim, uh, this area in the middle of Saudi Arabia, this is called Najd. And many, many tribes lived there. And he, Amr ibn Malik, he asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was offered Islam by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the way it's narrated in Ibn Ishaq that he did not accept it, he did not embrace Islam and at the same time he did not reject Islam. He said to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, why don't you send some companions with me and then we will uh, to go out and, and preach this and teach this 
to the tribes of Najd, and then we will see how Islam would spread in there. And then Rasulullah wasallam told them that I would not be, I, I cannot guarantee their safety if I send them with you. And then Malik and this man, Amir ibn Malik said, I will guarantee their safety. I will be, me and my tribes will guarantee the safety of your companions. And in Arabia that was enough. That was enough to, to, to uh, you take the protection of somebody and, and this is called al-jiwar, the protection that, that you cannot be hurt as long as these people are protecting you. So 70 companions, 70 of the best companions, the narrators of Quran, the reciters of Quran, the learners and the learned people in the religion, and they were headed by Al-Mundir ibn Amr. Remember Al-Mundir ibn Amr? The leader of the right wing and the, on the battle of Uhud. He was uh, the leader there and he was led, he led the, this uh, mission uh, to uh, call for the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the behavior of these companions on the way to uh, the tribe of Amir ibn Malik was unbelievable. They would be working their way. They did not take charity. They did not take handout from the people they were sent with. They would work and they gather woods and they would sell it to, to, to these people. They would work hard and that, that's what they did all day. And then at night they would sit down and then recite Quran and they would teach Quran all the way until they got to the place of the well of Ma'una. What happened then, is there was a message from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to a head of a very famous tribe that was called Amir ibn Tufayl. And Amir ibn Tufayl, his mention will come again and again later on. And this man was sent a message to, from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a written message, and it was sent by that person Haramu, Ibn Mulhan. And Haram went to Amir ibn Tufayl and he gives him the message of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he tells him that this is a message from Muhammad ibn Abdullah Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The man doesn't open the message, doesn't listen to the message. The next thing that Haram feels is a spear that penetrates his body from behind and comes out of his, of his belly, but comes out on, on the front. So he was killed from the back. And the, 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 then the thing that he said, Fizzu wa Rabbu al-Ka'bah, I, I won, and that means I won paradise, that he uh, was delivering a message for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he was killed while he was doing that. Then this man, Amir ibn Tufayl, he went to the tribe of Bani Amir, and he said, there are 70 of Muhammad's companion here on the way, they are at the, at the place of Ma'una, and we need to go and take care of them. And the Bani Amr did not uh, respond to him, because they said that this is treason. So he went to another tribe. He went to Bani Sulaim. He went to Bani Sulaim, and Bani Sulaim decided to respond to him. And they went with him in an army, and they killed, they killed the 70 companions. There were only one person that survived the massacre. And that person was Ka'b ibn Zayd ibn Najjar. Ka'b ibn Zayd was wounded and they thought he was dead. And he fell between the bodies. But they did not know that he was still alive. And he, after they all went out, and then he escaped the place and he went back to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to tell him about what happened. They were against Muslims. Amr ibn Malik was the one that actually later on it was uh, obvious that he was the one that, derived, that dragged them to this place and he had an agreement with Amr ibn Tufayl that I will bring you people. I will bring you people from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa so you can take care, you can kill them, you can uh, do whatever you want with them. The, the leader of this uh, was scouting, Al-Munzar ibn Amr, and he was with Amr ibn Umayyah al Damri, and they were away. And they, they saw vultures around the place where they left the Muslims uh, on the well of Ma'una. And they came over there, they came back, and they saw the scene. And they saw the mushriks were, were still uh, there, and Al-Munzir fought and was killed. Amr ibn Umayyah was captured as a prisoner by this man, uh, Al-Tufayl, Amr ibn Tufayl. Amr ibn Tufayl, his mother made a vow 
that they would release a prisoner because of an old nazar or of an old vow that she had. So she asked her son to release this person to fulfill her old vow. And he did. He shaved his head and he released him because of that. 